All right, well, good morning. If I could get your attention, we're going to call it 7 o'clock on the dot. We're going to call the uh, first meeting of the subcommittee meetings to order. This is the subcommittee on uh, general government for appropriations. And uh, if I could, uh, Representative Clark, if you would, open us in prayer this morning. Bow our heads. Dear Lord, just thank you for this morning. Thank you for another day. And uh, just uh, bless this meeting. Let it be honoring to you. And uh, just thank you just for another day. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Thank you, Representative Clark. If you will, I'm going to move through this. We have just a few minor changes under general government. Uh, if you could find your uh, tra on your tracking sheets, uh, section 14.3.3 under Department of Banking and Finance. Uh, we found a $53,253 savings, which just dealing with uh, three positions that were hired late in the year and a little savings from the timing of their uh, salaries coming in. Moving down to Office of Commissioner of Insurance, uh, page 13, section 29.1.4. Uh, same thing, um, unhired, unfilled positions, a savings of a reduction in the transfer here of $92,191. Under Department of Natural Resources on page 16 on your tracking sheet, section 34.3.3, uh, we see the same thing here. Uh, they received funding for three positions, and uh, two of them started in August and one has not started yet, and a savings of $36,482. And that was under the EPD division of Department of Natural Resources. And then under the same department, uh, but in the Historic Preservation, page 16, uh, section 34.5.4, a savings of $40,562. Again, this was for the funding of a position that was not filled. Um, that, uh, that completes the changes for uh, the subcommittee on general government at this time for the committee. Do we have any questions? Second. Seeing no questions, we have a motion to pass and a second. All in favor of moving forward with this as a recommendation to the full committee signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Hearing none. Uh, the chair at this time before we adjourn would like to take the uh, latitude, if I may, Mr. Chairman England, um, to point something out if I have that. Uh, I, I noticed Representative Carpenter sitting here in the back. Are you on appropriations, Representative? That would be a negative. Uh, the chairman pointed out to me before we started that um, you probably will never make it on appropriations uh, unless you learn to bring biscuits from your restaurant. So uh, we're, we're glad to see you here. Appreciate your, uh, your, your willingness to come in early and, and watch this budget process, but I would take serious taking him some biscuits. <laughs> yeah, we can take that in the form of a motion. No for it, no for it. But uh, with that, I appreciate everyone. I appreciate everyone being here early, and I appreciate the work this committee has done on the subcommittee of general government. And uh, we'll consider ourselves adjourned.
All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let's call this meeting to order. Um, let's see, this is the second meeting we've had on the fiscal year 2018 amended. I appreciate everyone being here early. Uh, let's see, then let me go. I think everybody has a tracking sheet now, correct? I think uh, Representative Williams needs one. Let me go through the changes from last time. There's just been a few. I'll highlight them for you. On page two of your tracking sheet, 41152, uh, provide the funds for the Center for Rural Prosperity and Innovations. As a rural, this is the House Rural Development Council, $75,000. That was the first change from what you had the other day, recommended by the full committee. Page three, 41182, under the teaching section, this is performing a market study of the degrees and the uh, currently offered at universities and colleges in South Georgia. There's no cost associated with that. It just says that the House wants that to happen by next year in September. Um, you'll see in 41191 right under that this is the adjustment for the start date of two field service clinical vets that's just a differential because they didn't get onboarded at, uh, for the full appropriation <clears throat> moving on to page 5 under dual enrollment 414 4414 this is uh, an adjustment in funds. It, li it eliminated the transportation grant for uh, for dual enrollment, but it was put in in another area in the in the budget. Well, that's, that's the regents, and the final change you'll find it under uh, technical college system on page eight, forty six four point four. You're familiar with the mobile weld welding labs that have been uh, so successful. This adds two of those mobile welding labs. This was recommended by Chairman England. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all the changes from the last time we met. Are there any questions? Representative Smyre. Uh, oh, oh, okay. I'm, so, <laughs> then I'm certainly ready for that. Representative Smyre, yeah, <laughs> I'll accept your motion at this time. <laughs> There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. The motion passes. Thank you. <laughs> biscuits in, in Nimmer's office. He ran late, so he owes the biscuits. questions. Good morning, George. Good morning. I don't have a tracking sheet. Yes, no, I, I have new ones. I'm hanging out with everybody. Just sit right here. You sitting there? Yeah. Okay. Do you, do you want to go ahead and just sign this right now? Just 
yeah. your name mm -hmm. up there. I'm doing well. I hope you didn't have any traffic. Yeah. Wow. So maybe there's something to be seen. Well, that's how long it takes me to get from from my home here with no traffic, but a little bit longer. Cindy came up last night, and we went to dinner, and uh, she had a meeting yesterday afternoon, and so uh, did that, and uh, so she left this morning when I did, and headed back. Back to me, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning, Mr. L no. That was a kid, John. Um, I'm staying over in this uh, Inman Park area over here. A bunch of legislators over there. <laughs> Park. It's kind of on the belt line. It's right near that little village there. It's just an unbelievable amount of condos that's been built over there. It's just like another city over there. They're beautiful and uh, really nice. You walk to everything. You can walk on the Beltline restaurants. No, you didn't need to be here. I was talking to him. You you needed to be here. You the one needed to be here.
Great. Okay, um, I, I see the hours here seven twenty. So, uh, education. I call this education subcommittee uh, K through twelve um, to order and thank uh, members of my committee and staff and others in the audience for being here this morning. Um, as we start this um, uh, tracking sheet, uh, if y'all uh, members have it in front of you, we'll uh, start um, with um, Department of Early Care Learning. 24.14 and the adjustment there, uh, $43,109 reflects a um, start date uh, change uh, for position there uh, that they uh, will feel, we won't be filled until March 1st. So uh, that savings uh, there. Um, no other changes uh, under early care learning. Continue to, to um, Turn um, over to Business and Finance Administration, 24.3.3. Uh, we uh, added $500,000 to the uh, $15 million uh, buses, would um, bring us up to a total of 200 buses. Um, so glad to see that change uh, there. No other changes. Um, on that page, we continue on over to uh, non-QBE uh, education formula grants, 24.122, a uh, $125,000 savings there from a position that has not yet been filled by DOE. Um, as you see, very few changes. We continue over to um, no changes to ERS. Have I gotten everything? Mm -hmm. And over to Office of uh, Student Achievement on the Governor's Office, um, 24, uh, 27.7.4. Um, provide um, AP exam fees for 13,600 low income students. So we um, found that $408,115 to cover that. And um, under 27.7.5, um, we um, added $400,000 for training uh, grant for uh, start the summer um, for the um, Principal Leadership Academy for principals that was uh, provided for in HB 338 uh, in last year's session. So those are the ch changes. Um, that are um, since our last meeting. And um, are there any questions from our committee? Hearing none. Uh, I, uh, thank you. Uh, motion, all in favor say aye. aye. Motion passes. Again, I thank you and I really thank the staff for working so hard uh, on this amended budget and my committee. And with that, uh, we will adjourn. Well, I was glad we were.
We're going to wait just a minute to get at the time advertised, so it'll be just a minute. Good morning. It is officially 7.30, and there's a beautiful moon outside. Thank you all so much for all getting up early and being here. We know this is one of the most important things that we do here during this time. I would like to call to order this uh, meeting of the, of the Human Resources Subcommittee as we look at just a very few changes in our budget. To the committee, I'd like to direct you to Adult Mental Health Services under Behavioral Health, line 15.4.3. We will provide funds to de design the kitchen renovation at East Central Regional Hospital in Augusta, Richmond County. This kitchen is 48 years old, outdated, and needs to be updated to meet the needs. Um, the amount is an addition of $410,000. Line 15.4.4, to provide one-time funds for establishing additional behavior health crisis center beds. The amount is $1 million. This will increase the capacity that is so needed in our state. Um, it is prioritized by the department, so they will be dealing with exactly where those will be placed. Both of these last two items were in the governor's 2019 bond recommendation. So instead of waiting for the bond, we're going to go ahead and put them in the budget. Your next change is under human services, under child welfare services, 28.6. 28.6.5 to adjust funding for caregiver support positions. Also, um, and that amount is a decrease of $1,273,754. Also in item 28.6.6 to adjust the funding for personal services on actual start dates for supervisor mentor, mentor positions and that is $1,010,590. To explain this just a little bit, they are based on actual start dates, any unpaid pay periods, vacancies. The money will be retrieved. It is not a permanent change for 2019. It is only at this time for positions not filled. And then also under 28.6.7 to provide funds for design, construction, 
and equipment for the new Division of Family and Children's Services Building in Fitzgerald, Ben Hill County. This was also a 2019 bond package <coughs> initiative, but we will move it forward and try to make that a little bit better. That amount will be an add of $550,000. One more item on the next page, Department Administration 28.8.4. This will be also to adjust the funding for actual start dates of 25 human resources positions. Uh, those are the vacant positions at this time that cannot be filled by the end of this budget period. And that will be a decrease of $235,529. Those are the changes at this time. Are there any questions from the committee? Move to approve. Second. We have a move to approve and a second. Any further discussion? If not, will any, um, all in favor by aye? Aye. Op opposition by like sign? Thank you. It carries and we move forward. And this is a very good budget, y'all. All throughout it, I encourage each of you to take your time and look at it. We're doing much of what the House has promised in it. We are adjourned. Good morning, uh, members of the Public Safety Subcommittee on Appropriations. Thank you for all for being here this morning, bright and early. Um, okay. I've been told to, to slow down. You know, we're ready. The whole committee's ready to go. I, <laughs> I, and I hear that Earl said a set an early precedent on moving things along, so. But um, as we allow for the clock to tick to 740, um, 
I want to express my gratitude to members of this committee. Um, the individuals worked hard to help analyze the budget, ask good questions during our public hearings on the amended budget, um, and have already started to discuss the 19 budget. So I'm proud of that additional research and thought that goes into their jobs. I want to thank the staff as well. Uh, Courtney and Brian have been exceptional in helping us uh, dig into the numbers, ask questions. We've, um, we're appreciative to the agencies for their provision of information as we've asked for it. Um, it helps us to do our job. And <laughs> and I should drag this out like a good lawyer and try to get this, you know, as many, as many billable minutes yeah, as I, I can, I tell you. I'm not, not doing a very good job in my, my profession here. Um, but we have gone through thorough hearings on the aspects of the budget that needed to be analyzed um, with respect to governor's changes um, and recommendations. Um, and so we'll just hit, this morning, we'll just hit the changes that we've made within each agency. Um, there are a significant amount of position start dates that, that started later in the year, and so you'll see as we go through that that we made adjustments for those position start dates. You will we'll work off of our track sheet that we had this morning. The, the first item we have on the agenda for is this section five, which is the Court of Appeals. And in looking at the Court of Appeals, we only had an adjustment at line 5.1.4 of $53,752. Judicial Council, we did not have any changes recommended from that from our subcommittee. On section eight, dealing with prosecuting attorneys, we had a few changes there. At line 8.2.3, um, we recommended no additional money for the uh, accountability courts. We're waiting for their certification for Coney and, and uh, Lookout Mountain judicial circuits. An adjustment also for, pers for uh, new positions at 8.3.3, at $24,061. Superior Courts, which is Section 9. We had a few changes there. At line 9.3.3, a request for an increased funds um, for the habeas court cost. We reduced that by 20,000 from 50 down to 30. At 9.3.3, again for the Coney and Lookout Mountain <coughs> circuits, a reduction there of 42.828. At 9.3.6, we adjusted fundings for new position start dates at 44,813. No, no changes to the Supreme Court, Section 10. No changes to Section 18 for community supervision. Department of Corrections, we had an adjustment there at 19.8.3, where we reduced the, uh, for adjustment of personnel services for a delayed start date of $11,985. Department of Defense, no change there to the governor's recommendations. Section 30, the GBI, we had an adjustment there at line uh, three, thirty point five point six. This was dealing with CJCC. There was an adjustment there for delayed positions at eleven thousand six hundred sixty-seven dollars, and at also at line sixty point sorry thirty point six point one, we made an adjustment there for new position delay at uh, ten thousand one hundred and seventy-six dollars. Department of Juvenile Justice, Section thirty-one. We recommended an adjustment uh, to line 31.1.3, dealing with the increased funds for youth that are a public safety risk and that they are, their competency is being determined uh, while they're being detained. Uh, the, in, the, in analyzing the contracts for that particular, for those beds, uh, we determined that there was a cost savings that should be recouped in the request of 391000 
$358. Department of Law and Adjustment for Start Dates at $48,833 at Section 33. Section 35, another adjustment at line 35.2.3 for start dates at $21,888. Public Defenders Council, Section 37, also adjustment for new positions at 37.1.4, $23,745. Public Defenders at line 37.2.3, deals with Oconee and Lookout Mountain Circuits, an adjustment there <coughs> downward of $12,781. And then uh, line 37.2.4, also a start date adjustment a reduction down of $55,431. Department of Public Safety, we have adjustments there. Line 39.6.5, um, that is at uh, $1,400 for the, uh, this is the fire, Georgia Firefighter Standard Safety Council. Then also an adjustment for delayed start dates, the Peace Officers Standards Training Council at line 39.7.4, downward of 30,520. And again, an adjustment at the Training Center for delayed start dates at line 39.8.6 of 119 and $106. Um, and I'll note that we have a, a full allotment of the fireworks excise tax that was allocated to the uh, firefighters standard safety council as well and that was put into the budget this year the other item was GEMA and I skipped over that that was section 27 but there were no changes to that that section oh I'm sorry there was an adjustment for delayed start dates of thirty thousand four hundred ninety seven dollars those are all the recommendations that the subcommittee has made to the full committee Total savings um, in this recommendation is $9,047,863. Sorry, nine hundred. We did Sorry. a better job. Than yeah, no kidding. <laughs> nine thousand four hundred. Yeah, that's right. Nine four seven eight six three um, in our reductions to the re governor's recommendation. I do have a motion to accept so the recommendation. So motion by Mandy, seconded. Second by Mr. Williams. All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? None. The recommendation passes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We handle it. I don't know about a guy who's here at 8 that paid 9,000 bucks. I know 9,000.
All right. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here this morning. Uh, we're going to go ahead and call this subcommittee meeting to order, the Transportation and Infrastructure Budget Subcommittee. Um, thanks to um, the committee for working with the um, budget office, particularly our analyst, Abby Day. Abby, thank you for all your work getting all the information we needed on this amended budget. Uh, also, thanks to the governor's office for sending us a good budget, and then thanks to the Department of Transportation for all the information they've provided on the amended. Um, there were no changes to the amended budget. Uh, the main change that the governor's office put in there was the airport aid money, and I know that Abby had emailed everyone that information, but there's a printout today also showing the federal match on all those projects. Um, but there were, like I said, there were no more changes. Um, you know, are there any questions from the committee on the amended budget? Okay, so uh, if none, I would entertain a motion. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposed? All right, budget passes. We'll get started on the 19 budget. Thank you all.
Okay, it's uh, 8 o'clock. I'm going to go ahead and call our um, meeting to order this morning. I want the big chairman over there to know that I was up early this morning. I saw the moon out there, and it's really bright. looks like a big flashlight, and just wanted you to know we were on, on task early this morning, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> really big, yeah, really big. Uh, we, we're going to go ahead and, and run through. You have tracking sheets there on our budget. You've seen this before, and we'll finish this up this morning. Uh, there are really very few changes in this that we have discussed, and I'm going to run through the changes right quick, and then uh, we'll move on from there. The first item, uh, pay 17.1.11. Uh, There's a $750,000 ad. This is to provide funds for the analysis of the Medicaid delivery system for identifying efficiencies in service delivery improvement opportunities. On the next page, uh, 17.4.6 is $75,000. This is provide funds for the State Office of Rural Health to conduct a request for proposal to identify a uh, post-secondary institution within the state as an appropriate location for the Rural Center for Healthcare Innovation. Now this came to us as recommended by the Rural Health Develop Rural, the House Rural Development Council. You're gonna see four or five items in here that came from us and any of you that were attended the meetings, you'll be aware of those. 17.7.1, there's just a truing up there. This is the uh, funds for the growth in Medicaid. Uh, there's a slight uh, different amount there than was in the governor's proposal, but that's just some later data and a truing up of the numbers right there. Uh, on position workforce, 17.12.1, uh, you know, we've got a new uh, director over there and really doing a fine job. There again, these two items came as recommendations out of our rural uh, meetings that we had. This is $40,000 for the statewide residence recruitment fair that they have not been able to have for the last few years, and it's, they've done a good job recruiting residents to stay in the state and, and practice medicine here. 17.12.2 is a $60,000 ad. It's kind of tied in with that. This is for them to develop a one-stop residency website where residents who are interested or graduates of medical school who are interested in doing a residency program they have a one-stop shop they can look and see what's available all across the state and we think that's going to pay big dividends and help us recruit more doctors to stay in georgia 17.12.3 uh, there's a slight reduction one hundred and ten thousand dollars this is uh, reduced funds for the Gateway Behavioral Health Psychiatric Residency Program in Savannah. They were just a, a little later, a slow start up, a little later than they thought, so there's 110000 uh, in reduction there. The next item, 1712.4, is a reduction of $100,000. This is for the Accelerated Track Program at Memorial Health. There again, they were just slow to start, and, and they're okay with that part of it. And that is the changes in the public health. There are, there are no changes. And so at this time, if there are any uh, questions from the committee, we'll hear those. Okay, if not, we've got a motion and a second that we do pass. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed, no. It passes. Thank you very much. And want to thank the uh, House Budget Office for their help on this and thank the committee members. And we're adjourned. Thank you.
Uh, thank you. I think we have a quorum now, and we'd like to begin. And this is the uh, Economic Development Appropriations Committee, and we just have a few changes. And uh, but first of all, I want to thank the House Budget Office and the Governor's Budget Office for such a, a great uh, job they've done. And we could not be here without them. And I want to thank the members of the committee for all the work they've done. Uh, first of all, I'm just going to go over the changes, and if you've got a tracking sheet, I will call the number out so you can go over it with us. Our first change is the Department of Agriculture, line 13.2.3. The funding for 11 new positions for the Department of Agriculture in the FY18 budget they were unable to fill all those positions right now, but they plan to fill them later on. So we just uh, adjusted the base starting date for those positions, and uh, we, uh, it's for $158,142 that we did to show up that, uh, those positions. The next change is in the Department of Community Affairs, line 16.14.2. We changed the name from Community Defense Initiative Grant to Defense Community Economic Development Fund to reflect the name given in House Bill 470 during the 2017 session. Now, I'm not going to ask y'all to repeat the name that we changed it to because I probably couldn't remember it myself. <laughs> it's a little long. <laughs> Department of Economic Development, line 23.5. Point one. This is another adjustment uh, to funds for the project manager that was added in, uh, to the Economic Development Department in FY18 base. The starting date was a little late, so we picked up $6,925 on that. Another adjustment in the Department of Economic Development is on line 23.7.1. We adjust the funds for a trade representative position that was added to the Department of Economic Development in FY18 based on the starting date. And we picked up an extra $22,634. Those were all the changes that, that my uh, committee saw that we need to make. And uh, if I have, do I have any questions from committee members? Hearing none, do I have a motion to pass? So moved. Do I have a second? second? All in favor say aye. aye. Thank you and thank you for your time.
Good morning. Good morning. I'm I'm tickled to death to have looked out this morning and saw plenty of folks here at seven o'clock and then seven ten. So we're thankful for everyone being here. In all seriousness, thankful that your travels in this morning were safe and that you're able to be with us. I'm gonna at this point call on Reverend Sam Watson to uh, do an invocation for us this morning. turn the uh, gavel over to Chairman Nimmer. Y'all take it easy on him. Uh, he's, he's fresh in the co-pilot's role, so just be easy on him. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here at this time. We'd like to recognize Chairman England for the purpose of presenting the bill, Marvel. HB 683. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning again, everyone. Thank you for being here. And we'll try to roll through this fairly quickly. It is actually a very pretty much simple and mundane amended budget. It's what I've said for many years, and, and we've tried to get into the practice of uh, myself and Chairman Hill of making the amended budget uh, what it should be, a, an actual true up of what we see as we start wrapping up the year. Uh, first, want to thank our subcommittee chairs and their subcommittees for all the work that they've put into getting us to this point, but uh, most especially our staff, Martha and Christine, and all the staff in the House Budget and Research Office for what they do, uh, the hours that they spend while we leave here a lot of days to go back to our lives and, and check on our families and our businesses. And first one thing or another, they're here for several hours, usually every day after we're long gone, uh, many times into the evening. So a uh, big, big thank you to all of them. So, all right, as we start um, into the budget document, if you'll flip to section three, Joint Offices of General Assembly, you'll see some adjustments there. Um, there are some merit adjustments and some uh, workman's comp and self-insurance program adjustments that are common throughout the budget, so I'm not going to touch on each of those. However, the Joint Office of the General Assembly, the House, and the Senate budgets, of course, the governor doesn't, doesn't have the authority to touch that as well as the judiciary budget, so you'll see some adjustments there that that they were not able to make, that we're having to make. So at 3.1.3, .3, you'll see the House half of uh, some dues for the Georgia Building Authority, and also in the Legislative Fiscal Office at 3.2.1, uh, the House a share of an adjustment there as well. Moving on to audits and accounts, again, another animal of the General Assembly. You'll see some of the kind of the statewide common changes there in that program as well. Uh, at 5.1.4 under Court of Appeals, um, what I want to do, I, I will, I will kind of mention these adjust, salary adjustments as we go through the budget. They're not really salary adjustments. All these are, are where we had placed new positions within the budget last year as we left here and as the FY18 budget then took effect you had many agencies trying to spool up to, to make the additional hires that we'd allowed. And so what we do in that case is, of course, go through and look for those funds. So if some, the money is available July 1. If the hire is not made till November 1st, there is a savings to capture. We captured in the amended. The full amount is still there in the next fiscal year budget because it is in the continuation portion of that budget. So you're going to see several of those positions throughout several agencies where positions were added but the higher dates were not necessarily July 1 again could have been September 1 January 1 October 1st whatever so you'll see a capture there uh, starting in Court of Appeals at 5.1.4 
going through the judicial council you'll see the other merit adjustments and some of the statewide adjustments as well throughout that budget again those fall to the general assembly to make the changes within the courts and the legal system on prosecuting attorney section 8 and you'll see something related to this in a couple of different places throughout the budget under 8.2.3 uh, they asked for some money for the uh, additional accountability courts that were uh, started. However, the position that we have had has always been that we waited until those courts were certified before we put that money in. Uh, the ones that the funds were asked for there had not been certified as of uh, when we were looking to adopt this budget. Again, some other salary start dates under prosecuting attorney's counsel. Under Superior Court Section 9, again, at 9.3.4, it goes back to the, to the certification dates of the accountability courts and then some other adjustments as well for start dates. Under Supreme Court, again, the statewide changes. Moving on to the State Accounting Office, you'll see no changes within that agency. Uh, Department of Administrative Services, no house changes there. Under the Department of Ag, Section 13, 13.2.3, just call your attention to where we placed 11 positions uh, in the FY18 budget. Six of those have been filled, five are in progress of being filled, so all of the funds that were originally appropriated there will not be used by the end of this fiscal year. Those funds do remain in the big budget going forward. Rolling on over to Banking and Finance in Section 14, You'll see another adjustment for start dates there at 14.3.3. Moving into section 15, uh, behavioral health and developmental disabilities. At 15.4.3, what we've done there is uh, put move some bonds that were already allocated in the governor's proposed budget in FY19, pulled a couple of things back, and I'll walk you through those as we get to them. Uh, pulled them out of the bond package, went ahead and funded those with cash so those things, those projects could go ahead and get started. Uh, the kitchen facility there in Augusta is uh, Chair Lady Dempsey, 50, almost 50 years old, and is in bad need of renovations. 1544, again dealing with uh, the Behavioral Health Crisis Center beds. Um, as we travel the state this year with our Rural Development Council, we'd heard, and this is not not Chairman Earhart this is not uh, just in rural areas this is in urban areas as well suburban areas as well where there is a crisis on having enough behavioral health beds available we've heard it from law enforcement we've heard it from our hospitals we've heard it from a lot of different places and what this does just allows the outfitting of additional beds in these crisis centers uh, th this one-time type expenditure uh, going forward, it doesn't encompass the operating cost, so it, it is a one-time expenditure. Going on to Section 16, DCA, no house changes there. Department of Community Health, Section 17, uh, 17111, provide funds for the analysis of the Medicaid de delivery system for the purposes of identifying efficiency and service delivery improvement opportunities. Uh, Rural Development Council recommendation is as the federal government is moving forward looking at the potential of going to a block grant system uh, nationwide for Medicaid delivery uh, part of what this would do is to look toward helping hospitals identify and understand how to go uh, to a uh, capitated rate versus a fee-for-service rate so that's what some of that would help help in planning for that 1746. Um, another recommendation coming out of the Rural Development Council was to establish within a post secondary institution in the state a, a basically a school for hospital board members, CEOs, and CFOs so that they fully understand their fiduciary responsibilities, their legal responsibilities, and just exactly what is entailed in running and operating a hospital. Uh, we as you and I all know, uh, our hospital boards and authorities around the state are usually the pillars of our communities and folks that 
that we go to and do business with on a daily basis. However, that doesn't necessarily equip them for understanding all of the aspects that go into running a hospital. So one of the things that the Rural Development Council is recommending, and it's also come out of some of the work within the, ho the Rural Hospital Stabilization Committee, that there does need to be some training there. So uh, that will be done as an RFP, and our medical colleges, pr public and private within the state, will have an opportunity to bid for that contract to provide that schooling and put that in place. If you got any further questions on that, I'll be glad to be glad to sidebar with you on those as well. Uh, continuing in section 17, 1712-1, um, several years ago prior to the recession, the state had participated in a re recruitment fair for rural hospitals to be able to come set up a recruitment fair to, to get physicians and doctors interested in coming to their, their hospitals. Uh, that had gone away during the recession. Uh, a recommendation from the Rural Development Council was that that be reinstituted. And then 1712-2, uh, over the last couple of years, we've had a couple of different groups come to Chairman Parrish and myself talking about a need for a kind of a clearinghouse for physicians uh, to know where the opportunities are around the state for them to go practice and for on the flip side of that coin if someone's wishing to retire and go to the house uh, and they have a practice set up but if they retire that they're the last doctor in a community for them to be able to advertise that there's a practice there that's either for sale or that they're willing to give to a doctor to come to that area so that that 60,000 there would help establish that clearing house 1712-3 and 12-4, two adjustments, uh, again, based on the start times um, on the Gateway Behavioral Health Psychiatry Residency Program and on the Accelerated Track Program at Memorial Health in Savannah. Those programs, of course, when everything goes live July 1, it does take these entities a little bit of time to spool up. So there were some savings that could be captured there from, from the lag time and, and spooling that up. The base budget remains there for that going forward because we, we do feel that both of those programs are vitally important to this state. Department of Community Supervision, no changes. Department of Corrections, one adjustment under state prisons at 19.8.3 for a higher date change. Department of Defense, no changes. Driver Services, no changes. Section 22, decal. You'll see one change there at 2214, again, related to a higher date. 23, section 23 under economic development, two changes, one under global commerce, one under international relations and trade, both uh, related to a higher date there as well. Department of Education, section 24. 2433, the governor had put in $15 million to buy, I think, 194 school buses. Uh, we've added an additional 500,000. I'll show you where that came from here in just a few minutes uh, to take that number to 200 school buses statewide. Under non QB grants, 2412 2, uh, a position that we put in last year's budget that is yet to be filled, just capturing the savings there. That's all the changes under education. Section 25 ERS, no changes there. Forestry, no changes. Office of the Governor, first change you'll see there is going to be at 27.5.4. Again, another adjustment for start date. Moving down to 27.7, 27.7.4. Going back and providing for an additional AP exam for free and reduced lunch students. Uh, you know, last year uh, the recommendation of the committee was to do one free STEM AP test for all students. Um, and in the, in the time since then, we've come to realize that it's still necessary and that we need to provide one of the free AP tests for the free and reduced lunch students. That is $408,115 there. 2775, 
House Bill 338 from last year established the uh, Statewide Leadership Academy for Principals, and what we're doing there is setting up the funding for that training program to start. Uh, there will be additional funds in the 19 budget for that as well. Going forward into Human Services, Section 28, 28.6.5, Twenty-eight point six point six. Again, just adjustments based on the actual start dates for those entities. The full funding will remain in the FY19 budget, but again, just capturing savings there from delayed starts on those positions. I mentioned a while ago uh, that we'd pull a couple of items forward from the bond list in 19 to do cash funding for in the uh, amended budget, you'll see the second one of those at 28.6.7 uh, to allow the movement of the DFAX building there in Ben Hill County. They've been on the list for several years and we just need to go on and get that one off the list and moving forward. 28.8.4, again, a true up on actual start dates. That's everything in human services. Moving on to the section 29, Office of the Insurance Commissioner. You'll see a transaction there at 29.1.4 that's also linked to 29.5.3, uh, movement of 1.7 million up to department administration. Again, looking at, at expenditures there and some vacant positions, we've captured a small savings, uh, 34,000 and change there in that position, or in that line item. Section 30, GBI couple of adjustments there for start dates at 30.5.3 and 30.6.1. Juvenile Justice Section 31. Chairman Welch and his committee, um, I think I'm going to just nickname him Bulldog Welch. I, he, gets, he, he latches on to the bumper sometimes of the car he's chasing and, and see, sinks his teeth in and doesn't let up. But... Um, in looking at 31.1.3 and, and talking to Director Niles there over the last couple of years, we do have a problem for youth that are involved in violent crimes and what we do with them and wh how we hold them uh, during the transition period from, from their initial arrest and going through trial. And so what we're doing there is uh, uh, addressing that and as uh, Chairman Welch and his committee looked into it, the, the original allocation or the original ask of 1.3 million is not necessarily necessary because they were counting the beds being full the entire time and that's not been the case. And so you'll see the adjustment there creating about a $400,000 savings. Moving forward through the Department of Labor, no changes. The Department of Law at 33.1.4, you'll see another adjustment for start dates. DNR section 34, you'll see a couple more adjustments for start dates at 34.3.3, 34.5.4 as well. Pardons and paroles, 35.2.3, another adjustment for start date there. Then looking at section 37, Public Defender Council, you'll see an adjustment at 37.1.4 for the start dates. And then 37.2.3, again, dealing with courts that have, the accountability courts that have not been certified yet. Uh, upon their certification, they will be funded, but again, our policy has been that not until that is done do we do that. And 37.2.4, again, start date adjustments. Public health, section 38, no changes there. Public safety, section 39, 39.6.5, an adjustment for start date. Same at 39.7.4 and 39.8.6, and those are the only adjustments there. Public Service Commission, no changes. Board of Regents, 41.15.2, 41.15.2. Another recommendation coming out of the Rural Development Council is the establishment 
of a, an entity, a center, to kind of be a one-stop shop for individuals and communities within Georgia and within rural Georgia as they're seeking to expand economic development in those areas. And so with that, putting in some seed money to get ready to kick that off starting at July 1st to allow them to plan for that. Under teaching at 41.18.2, one of the other things brought to us was the need to do an evaluation of professional degrees offered south of Macon within our state institutions. And all we're doing there is asking the Board of Regents to give a report to the House Rural Development Council, the Senate Rural Council, and the House and Senate Higher Education Committees by September 1st so that those can be looked at and any recommendations made going forward uh, as those committees meet throughout the summer. Uh, one of the, or a couple of the things that we have noted already is the need for a mid midwifery program. That was a new word to me about a week and a half ago, midwifery. I've heard of a midwife, but I didn't know there was such a thing as midwifery. <laughs> kind of like the way it sounds. <laughs> Y'all say it with me, midwifery. But anyway, <laughs> that and uh, behavioral health uh, professionals there's, uh, in rural areas of the state, both of those programs are something that, that are incredibly beneficial to individuals, to children, when you're related to the midwifery program, but all individuals as, you, as it relates to behavioral health. So recommendation there for that study. Uh, one other change there under uh, vet med experiment station, again, adjustment for start dates is there as well. Department of Revenue, no changes. Secretary of State, no changes. Student Finance, Section 44. If you look under 44.1.4, the, the funds for transportation dealing with dual enrollment have not been spent. So we've taken that 500,000 there and rolled it up to the school bus line that I'd mentioned in, under Department of Education earlier. That brings that total for school buses up to 200. Uh, that, that amount of money still does r remain in the base and we'll look at it as we go into the 19 budget to see if there's something that, that we need to adjust or, or do anything with there. That's everything in student finance. TRS, no changes. Technical College System of Georgia under 46.4, you'll see an addition there. Uh, the governor had mentioned during his State of the State, uh, me mentioned the purchase of two welding, mobile welding laboratories to travel our state. And looking at that further, uh, the need seems to be there for more than two, so we're recommending four of those trailers. Uh, those, the flexibility that those will provide for business and industry around the state are amazing as well as being able to uh, set these units at uh, some of our prisons to allow for the uh, training that we're doing on site on prisons as well. So as we need additional capacity wherever in the state and even to the point of a small company somewhere that's needing to kind of do a, a miniature quick start program, that will make those uh, more trailers out there available. Also working on a partnership that is the purchase price of the trailers, uh, but working on a partnership with biz business and industry as well for the consumables and supplies, uh, welding rods, uh, welding wire, gas, metal, those kind of things that'll be necessary for those, those to function and, and, and uh, do what we're needing them to do. So if you know someone that would like to participate, by all means, get them in touch with myself or the Governor's Chief of Staff, Chris Riley, we will sign them up in a heartbeat. Uh, transportation, I'm trying to get uh, Chairman Shaw to wake up and do something in his committee, but there's no changes there. I am proud of him, he was here on time this morning. I know how hard that might be. <laughs> but no, just because there's no changes does not mean that they have not done their work. They've certainly done their work in looking at it. Um, there are a lot of hoops that they have to jump through on those dollars and they're, they're just constantly making sure that those hoops are being jumped through to make sure those funds are being expended the way they should be. Section 48, Veterans Services, no changes. Section 49, Workers' Comp, no changes. 
And then the only change in Section 50 related to bonds is uh, where the debt service uh, was placed by OPB for the uh, common changes within the general offices of the General Assembly. And uh, that pretty much completes the presentation. I'm glad to answer any questions if there are any, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you, Chairman England. Uh, to the members of appropriation, uh, are there any questions? If you do have one and are unfamiliar, you've got a little button in front of you. Just mash it, and I'll try to try to find you on the board at this time. Are there any questions for Chairman England regarding the amended budget? Come, I, I'm gonna give you one more chance. Are there any That's questions? Okay. That's <laughs> well, Chairman England, it looks like wait you've a minute, done a, wait a minute, Chair Lady Tankersley. You you got you. I see you over there now. Okay, thank you. We yes, gave her too much time. Chairwoman Tankersley. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, my question is that as we're purchasing new school buses for the state of Georgia, are we equipping them with any safety equipment such as seat belts? It, it seems that every time I hear about a school bus wreck, multiple children are injured. And another question to that point, uh, there are different zones of the state, as you're well aware, that have extremely hot summers, and those kids you know, get off the bus, just dehydrated, red, sweating. Do um, so you so want a water fountain or you want an air conditioner? Well, <laughs> I want safety equipment and air conditioning would not be bad. The, <laughs> there, water on the buses. On, on the safety issue, there is a national standard that our school buses um, do follow on the ones we purchase in any county uh, our school system purchases. There is currently an ongoing debate as to the effectiveness of seat belts. Um, there is, from what I have heard, and I've, I've kept up with that discussion a good bit, um, there is a, a fairly substantial or significant debate going on whether seat belts and safety belts within a school bus are actually safer or if they might actually cause more harm by being in there. A uh, school bus is considerably different than an automobile or a van um, in what happens during an accident. Uh, there are, of course, we know, you know, padded seat backs and the safety appliances that are in the, in the uh, school buses at that time, uh, currently. Um, you know, the air conditioning issue is something that every local school system, we, we fund a base amount, and so the local school system certainly has that opportunity to add air conditioning um, if needed. And the way this year's been, they might need to work on heat more than they do air conditioning. But uh, though that becomes a local decision, and, and the seat belts actually could be a local decision as well. But currently, they, the buses that we're buying are, do meet the national and statewide standards. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. You can Any ask for Any other questions for Chairman England? You can ask for a motion. I, I, I don't want to rush it because Chairman Earhart was a little hesitant. He, he wanted to uh, inquire a little bit about midwifery. <laughs> but I, I, see th I think he's going to catch you down at the office later. I, I, I want to see if he can spell it first. He, he's, he's a little touchy this morning. Yeah, so I know. Just, uh, he's got a new grandbaby, though. He's, he's in a happy place. Chair, Ch Chairman England, we, we, uh, before we ask for a motion here, you're always very gracious in paying compliments to your subcommittee chairs and to the to the budget staff and their leadership and, and all the hard work, but uh, we all owe you a debt of gratitude through this process and your leadership for us. And, and a, as the chair, I would like to uh, just compliment you on your budget, budget presentation. Uh, you took all our advice and, and uh, guidance well and did a good job presenting this morning. So uh, I'm teaching we're very proud of you, I, but I, in all seriousness, I, thank you for your leadership and your hard work. At this time, I'd entertain the committee for a motion. Chairman Martin. I, I know, I missed it on purpose. <laughs> Chairman Martin. If I'm directed to uh, Chairman Engel, would you take a question? Yes, sir. I, isn't it true right up until that last bit of uh, compliment that uh, Chairman Nimmer made that he was chairing his last uh, uh, budget <laughs> conference for you, it, 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 right up to that? Isn't that isn't that true, Mr. Chairman? Until the, he saved himself. The gentle, the gentleman knows of which he speaks. If, if the chair would take that, uh, I'll, I'll conclude with that and move due pass on on the amended budget. Second. I don't ever take for granted that I'll ever get to sit here again. So uh, do what I can while I'm here. Thank you, Chuck. But uh, we have a motion. 
Right. We have a second. All in favor for moving forward with HB 683 uh, to rules signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Rules. We are adjourned. Yes.